This may be a biased perspective from that of mostly a jungler, but if there's one person dying a ton on a team, I feel like it's usually the support. And before everyone puts their pitchforks up, let me clarify. You've been told your whole life that warding is your responsibility, so when there's no wards, you go to put one, and then you die because, well, there weren't any wards. We get it, don't worry, but it's just a really bad look when the whole team seems like they're doing pretty well, and then the support score looks like this, or this. And look, I'm not saying that you should never die. A lot of engaged supports probably should be dying more on average than a lot of people, and dying for your team can be good, but most of these deaths are completely unnecessary. I mean, this fight and these deaths are completely avoidable, as well as this. If you look at these clips now and the int doesn't quite stand out to you yet, by the end of the video it should, and you'll be able to avoid these absolutely terrible deaths for good. With that, let's take a look at some of the reasons why supports just die more, and we'll show you how our challenger supports avoid the same mistakes. Let's get right into it. In this first clip, I'm coaching one of our subscribers on Zyra, and he's looking for some wards. Careful, back, 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 back. Whoa. Okay. Combo? Wait. We cut this clip moments before disaster, but like we said, supports often just feel the pressure to place wards down because it's quote unquote their job. But the first thing you need to know is you can't get vision if you're dead. This means you need to prioritize your own safety first. And to do this, we like to use something called a vision line. Simply put, look at all the sources of vision that you currently have and literally draw a line between them in your brain. This does include minions, so when minions move, like they crash into your tower, you want to change the line in your head. This line indicates the relative safety of the location. Anything behind this line is pretty safe, and beyond it, pretty dangerous. Also, the further away from a point of vision, the more dangerous it is. So around the towers or minions, we should feel pretty safe, but the middle should feel dangerous. Think about this vision line like a fence. If you have a long segment with nothing to support it, it's very weak in the middle. This weakness is what allows enemies to slip in and make your life difficult, so the most reasonable way of fixing it is by adding wards to reinforce it. If we place a ward here, it'll strengthen our vision line, and adjust it a bit like this. Let's go back and look at the Zyra clip moments before he dies. Since we don't know where there are, it's pretty dangerous to try to get vision, right? Like, uh, You have enough shallow vision right now to like walk in through here, but I would push the wave first, at yeah. the very least. All right, so now our vision line is basically straight down the river. The reason why I want him to shove out the wave is because it's going to improve our vision line to let us walk into the enemy jungle and try to push this line forward. If we can take control of just a little bit more into the enemy's jungle, our line will improve a lot. This can have snowballing effects that lets us slowly move the rest of our vision and start to control larger areas like all the river behind us. If you recall from earlier, I mentioned something called shallow vision, which basically is just the vision that lets us get to these points to ward in the first place. We obviously are going to have to go into dangerous territory to expand our vision, but you don't want to stray too far from the line. Our main goal is getting control of river, but without these initial wards, it would be pretty impossible to get these wards in the enemy jungle that actually do get us to our goal. The main issue is that a lot of supports do not get shallow vision at all, or don't play around it well. It exists to alert us to things like Akali moving over our line, so even though we would love to get a ward like this, we just can't. This is why when Zyra moves in here, I freak out. I would much rather him place a worse ward in this bush rather than greed for a deeper, better ward that he goes for instead. I see this all the time. When teammates are constantly pinging and saying, ward baron, ward dragon, whatever, the support will just run in to try and ward it and die. It's because they didn't do any of the setup to get the shallow vision, like leaving pings, sweeping along the way, and shoving waves, that you'll just never be able to ward it. Just like securing dragon isn't all your jungler's responsibility, <laughs> talking to you Kaisa, getting wards isn't just the support's responsibility either. You need specific situations where warding is even possible. So let's go back and look at those Nautilus ints from before and point out why they were so bad. If we pause right before the first death and think about the vision line, we should notice something important. If Nautilus's goal was to fight over control of this bush, we've got a bit of an issue. We don't know what's behind the bush. We just clearly don't have enough vision to actually be here fighting over it. 
So when Nautilus looks to re-engage here, he's just completely ignoring the fact that his vision line was behind him. This isn't a spot where Nautilus's team is failing him, so he can't get wards. He's just not playing around the vision that he has already. If we look at the next int, we'll see a similar idea. Look at where all our minion waves are here. Aurelia and Darius need to shove the waves in before we can really get good wards. We have no existing vision, so getting wards in places like this before we walk all the way in is pretty important. This would let us set up a shallow vision line, and then slowly look to push in and expand it once we have that existing vision and waves pushed up. The shallow wards initially will help our laners push in their waves, and the reason we need that is so that the enemies will have to respond to the waves that are crashing at tower. This gives us a chance to move into the jungle and set up that deep vision like we wanted. Be careful about rushing this though. If Aurelia pushes the wave, it doesn't mean we're good to go. We need to wait for a response from the enemy. The good thing is, is that we can continue pushing waves to tower, and if the enemy is persistent about trying to camp their jungle for us, they're just going to miss tons and tons of golden experience, and we can win the game that way. What's nice is that we win either way. If they do respond to the tower, we get the wards. If not, we win from gold. So as long as we're patient, we really can't lose. Unfortunately, Nautilus rushes this and goes too far, causing him to get caught out and bait a terrible fight. He does this plenty more times this game, and that's why his score looks so bad compared to the rest of the team. I don't think we need to go over that anymore, so let's just look at how different it looks when challenger players do it. In this game, our challenger support Achilles Heelys is playing Rakan. He's done a really good job of setting up insane vision around the dragon before the fight. I mean, just look at this vision line. He's going to reinforce this even more by walking in, sweeping the area, and pinking to make this line even better. Now that he's got a great zone of control, look at how hard it is for enemies to walk in. I'm just trying to zone so we can take this and get out. Nice. Because of all that setup, he literally just runs in because he knows he has an entire area behind him that's completely safe. And because of this, he's free to stop Olaf and the entire enemy team from even walking in to get access to the dragon in the first place. Now that is vision control. All right, so now let's get the one big thing out of the way that everyone is probably thinking. My team will literally never help me ward or do anything, so what do I do? First of all, this definitely isn't true, but let's pretend it is. The worst thing you can do is just run in and try and ward anyways. It's much better to just learn how to give up objectives. Remember the golden rule, you can't ward if you're dead. If you know for sure that getting wards in an area is really, really hard, just don't. Think about the next thing you can be setting up for, and do that while you know people are doing something else. This way, you'll find yourself having the shallow vision for that next play, and you might be able to put the game back in your favor with that. Single plays rarely determine the entire game, so don't be so short-sighted that you try to contest every objective and put yourself in an infinite loop where you always are second to the vision setup. Break out of this the first time, and you really won't need your team's help at all. This will cut down on a ton of needless deaths and make your games a lot easier. If you still think that your team is at fault for your deaths and inability to ward, or really anything else, then feel free to leave your name, rank, and region in the comments below so that we can take a look at your replays and point out your mistakes. Just don't be too upset if we roast you a little. You've signed up for it. Remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. Otherwise, you know the deal. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get more premium guides with one goal in mind helping you become a better player. We here at Skillcamp want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.